winter of 1998, Furbies arrived on the shelves of stores everywhere to form symbiotic relationships with humans because the transparent ethereal beings they once used as developmental hosts died out due to Furby climate change. Okay, let me try this again. Furbies came out in 1998, just in time for Christmas, and they were a massive success. In that year alone, they sold 1.8 million units and went on to sell 40 million units in their three years of production. They weren't just popular in America either. They got translated into 24 different languages and sold around the world. They're considered one of the first commercially successful domestic robots. And it's not hard to understand why. $35 for a robot that can learn, emote, and play games? It's no wonder kids were clamoring for them in droves. Though, to be fair, adjusted for inflation, that's a good $54 now. But hey, that's only a little more than the price of Diddy Kong. The success continued for another year or so and died off fairly abruptly after that. And while I can't say exactly why it petered out so fast, I have to assume that everyone who desperately wanted a Furby already had one or two and didn't have a continued reason to keep collecting new ones since the only differences were mostly cosmetic. Furby Babies did come out in August of 1999 and I recall them doing well, especially since they had a larger vocabulary and they were just so cute. But again, the craze seemed to end pretty quickly for something that was as huge as it was. There have been a few attempts to reboot the Furby franchise through new redesigned Furbies, but nothing ever seems to have quite the impact that the first generation had. The Furby craze is one of those things you just really had to live through. I remember them being such a hotly demanded item that despite how many were produced, it was hard to even get one sometimes, let alone one in the color you wanted. You'd have to call toy stores and ask them when they were getting new shipments. None of my Furbies were my first choice in terms of colors, but I loved them so much. I was just happy to have them. I remember feeling like having a Furby baby at all was a huge privilege because it had been so hard to get. May May, if you're still out there somewhere, I'm sorry I ever let you go. You're so expensive on eBay now. However, where there is light, there is darkness. Where there is day, there is night, and where there's a wildly successful toy line, there's horrific and hilarious cheap bootlegs waiting for your naive but well-meaning grandma to buy them for you at the flea market because she can't tell them from the real thing. She's a little confused, but by God has she got the spirit. Furby bootlegs were so prevalent that Tiger actually added this plastic tag to all Furby releases thereafter to distinguish genuine products from fakes Although, if bootleggers were already bootlegging entire Furbies, I don't know what was stopping them from bootlegging a little purple piece of plastic, but I digress. Before I get into all this, I just gotta thank everyone over at the official Furby fandom wiki. Almost all these photos I'm about to show come from the good people over there who are just truly dedicated to the cause of documenting fake Furbies, and I couldn't have done this video without them. To be honest, I tried really hard to find new fake Furbies on my own uh, so that this video wouldn't just be a glorified audiobook of me reading the wiki, but out of the two I thought I discovered, one was already on the wiki and one wasn't actually a Furby fake. It was just Wove Love. I completely suppressed my memories of the Wove Love commercial until I was doing research for this video. Love is here with a wonderful Gee, I wonder why. For the sake of brevity, and because my only personal experience is with the first generation of Furbies, I'll only be covering bootlegs pertaining to that era. There's a pretty long list of them too, so I won't cover all of them, so just like, really drink this in. Tag yourself, I'm Space Robbie 3. Furbishes are, to me, the platonic ideal of a Furby bootleg. They look a lot like a Furby, they have all the same basic features and abilities, they call their made-up language the same thing as Furbies, but they have that extra little pizzazz that you can only get from a good knockoff. Giant f you arms. One thing you need to know about Furby fakes is that a lot of them actually apparently share the same made-up language and voice clips, a phenomenon the Furby wiki calls Furdish, although what it's actually called in practice varies from product to product. I have to assume one factory created a serviceable enough knockoff of the Furby AI, and everyone else said, yeah, that'll do. 
There's actually a few different commonly shared AIs and voices that you'll find amongst Furby fakes, but there's not much noteworthy about them from what I can tell. They're just like Furbies, but less good. Baby Birdie Bird, on the other hand, is what I'd consider Furby inspired rather than a full blown fake. It's got a unique design in its own language called Birdie Jabber. Aside from its packaging being a bit of a knockoff of for reason, a hell of a lot more demanding, it's its own creature. I'll be showing a few other toys like Baby Birdie Bird throughout this video that are more inspired than straight up bootlegs. Now, when I was doing research for this video, I started to realize that not all Furby fakes are created equal, and thus I'd probably have to skip a good handful of the less interesting fakes. After all, Fairy here is just a pretty decent Furby plush with a thousand yard stare, right? <laughs> what? I read this, and that was when I realized there's no such thing as an unspecial Furby fake. Truly, there's never a dull moment on the Furby wiki. I love Fooby, because if I saw him with no context and had to come up with a name for him, Fooby is like exactly what I would name him. He's got huge big chungus energy. Fooby is interesting because it seems like the intention with him was to push him a little more into penguin territory. His arms usually look like penguin wings lying flat on its sides, but... Sometimes they're just arms. In fact, all the photos of Fubi are so varied that it makes me wonder if this is even really all the same toy or if it's different fakes that just so happen to be named Fubi. God, look at you. What's wrong with you? I love you. Fubi is actually in a, shall we say, family of other fakes that look very similar. Kubi, Purby, Purby, a different one, and poopy. <laughs> Actually, the way it's spelled in Japanese is probably more like pulpy, but let's be real, it's poopy. This isn't the last we'll see of Furby fakes all kind of coming from the same primordial sludge, so to speak, and what the reason is for this is hard to say. A lot of these Furby fakes came out immediately after Furby and Furby Babies, and a good chunk of them were made by unknown companies, probably to protect the producers from getting sued by Tiger and Hasbro. But stuff like this really makes me wonder if a majority of these fakes weren't just being made by the same company, or maybe it was like a network of different factories all kind of mutually ripping each other off? It's hard to really know. Anyway. Here's a few of my favorite things about this family. As you may or may not know, Furby got a handful of album releases around the world. Most of these are just dance remixes of popular songs of the time, some with Furby's singing over it or whatever. Oh, you're a Furby fan? Name three of his albums. Anyway, Furby wasn't the only robot pop star in the late 90s. Kubi got its own Spanish CD release as well. And unlike most of the Furby albums, these songs all seem to be original songs written specifically for Kubi. Psh, Furby doesn't even write her own music. Kubi is a real artiste. Furby, well, one of them, is cool because some brave soul took one apart and reported their findings on the Furby wiki. They noted that the insides of a Furby are extremely minimal when compared to a Furby. It only has one tiny circuit board and one sensor as opposed to Furby's, uh, five or six? I wouldn't be surprised if this is about equivalent with what other fakes look like on the inside. I bring this up because I wanted to mention something about these fakes that might not be obvious from the photos. It's a given that a bootleg's features are usually going to be a shallow imitation of the real deal. After all, you get what you pay for, but... Something else that puts Furbies above the rest is that their facial animation is always synced to what they say. Furby's mouth moves in time with its speech, and it blinks and moves its ears with a nice cadence that gives off the impression of gesticulating, kind of like how one might use their hands while talking. In contrast, most Furby fakes and wannabes just blink and flap their mouths in a rhythmic loop with no real regard for the timing of what's being said. This isn't the worst thing in the world, but I think this is one of those quality of life details that sets Furby apart and makes it a polished product. 
Last thing I have to say about the Fubi family, it would be remiss of me to not show you this alternate design for Purby, the other Purby, not the first Purby. <laughs> Sit down, stop looking at me like that. He looks exactly like that one photo of the Pomeranian standing on his hind legs. This goes against God and nature. So if you enjoyed Fubi's penguin-like qualities, take a look at Popo. Popo is a Korean Furby fake, and I think he's pretty cute. He's got a little plastic fish tied to his bow so that you can use that to feed him instead of sticking your finger in his mouth like you do for Furby. It's kind of like a little penguin binky. Popo also got its own commercial, which is very ballsy for a knockoff. I don't know too much about the state of bootlegs in Korea, but this makes me think that either the company producing Popo thought he was different enough from Furby that he deserved to be seen as his own entity, or they just really thought they'd get away with the dang thing. But either way, I really like him. Our next challenger is Ferdy. No, not Ferdy, Ferdy. No, I mean Ferdy. Oh God, there's three different Ferdies. Okay, clearly the name Ferdy is a hot ticket item in the world of fake Furbies. Let's start with the first one, Ferdy Senior. Apparently the Spanish version of this one is called Fofito, which I just love. Sweet little Papa Fofito is standard fare as far as fakes go. He looks just like a Furby, speaks Furdish, and doesn't seem to have any unique qualities or features except that sometimes he has a bow tie. Very classy. Now, Ferdy Jr. is also a pretty straightforward fake, and looking at this box, <laughs> I realize there's Probably so many goddamned Furbies because several different bootleggers must have realized they could just flip the B in Furby's logo and they were set. Last, <laughs> but certainly not least, Furdy Esquire. It's just a plush with some phrases it says if you push a button or pull a string, but apparently he's also sometimes a barnacle on a backpack. Just a really remarkable little creature. I don't really consider Kobe a Furby fake. He has his own unique AI, he looks nothing like a Furby, and he even has some features that Furbies don't have. He can walk around and apparently responds to voice commands. He can also wink, barf, and burp. Ugh, I really hate children's toys that can perform bodily functions. I use imagination to get away from the disgusting nature of reality. Why would I want to think about vomit while I'm playing pretend? Anyway. The only reason I even bring Kobe up in this video is because I needed to show this image on his box. Okay, smarty pants, what's the square root of nine? I fucking love this image. This motion blur makes it look like he's like warping into existence to dunk on this 10 year old. What's wrong with you? This kid's still trying to remember the difference between an octagon and a hexagon. You can't just materialize to our mortal plane and trash him like this, Kobe. Kobe, good God. Baby Brainy. Now there's a name. I don't have much to say about this guy. He looks like a Furby got lost in an arctic tundra and had to climb into the carcass of a freshly slain koala for warmth. I like how it's named Baby Brainy, but I don't think anything about it quite warrants this name. Its packaging boasts that it's the smarter interactive friend, but smarter than what? Kobe? I think not. Oh my god, I'm so excited to talk about this one. Meet Burbles. Oh, I don't like that. I know. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. The shit is ugly. These guys were shown at a Hong Kong toy fair and set to release in 2000, but nobody seems to know for sure if they actually ever sold any. Nothing seems to have turned up online, so I'm gonna go ahead and guess that they never made it to production. Burbles are pretty Furby-like, but I wouldn't quite call them a bootleg since they speak their own language, use their own technology, and their design is uh, totally unique from a Furby, aside from proportions. The only official content we really have preserved is an old promotional video where a woman reads off a script like she's begrudgingly reciting her English essay for the class and explains what burbles are and how they work. What really makes burbles special for me is their gimmick which is so out there, I don't think I'd pitch this to a toy company in a thousand years. Burbles are a cryogenically stored temperature sensitive creature that combines the nurturing play pattern of Tamagotchi with the interactive appeal of Furby. 
cryogenically what? That's right, you heard the lady. You wake this shit up from a cryogenic slumber like your GLaDOS. After all, what's a more nurturing play pattern than freezing creatures alive? Apparently, the way burbles were supposed to work is that you are never allowed to let them get warm, or else they throw a temperature tantrum, her words not mine, and you do this by either letting it rest on its chill pad or putting it in the fridge. Yeah, mom, sorry I moved the milk onto the countertop, but I needed room for my burble. I'm not a toy designer, but doesn't this seem intensely counterintuitive for making a toy that kids will get attached to? This would be like if I made a toy called Dwellers, and the only way to stop it from having violent meltdowns is if you seal it in a box, put it on a shelf in the basement, and forget you ever owned it. Not exactly a way to foster closeness or affection. My favorite part of this video is when she gets done boasting about how it's going to be better than Tamagotchi and Furby combined. And then she wakes it up and it just makes the most horrible demonic burble gerbils. Yeah, I'd probably sound like that too if I'd just been awoken from my frozen prison. Gizbo, Hubby, Peebo, and Wonder Pet all basically look the same and are probably all the same toy, just rebranded multiple times for some reason. It seems like Hubby and Peebo were both sold in Japan, and I'm not sure about Gizbo and Wonder Pet. I'm actually a huge fan of the fact that these guys interpret the Furby mane as a row of dinosaur spikes down their back. I think that's a cute design choice, and it really stands out among the other fakes. Another fun quality of this batch of fakes is Hubby's box. I love palling games. You sure look like you do, Habby. Say hello to Baby Luby. I know, take a moment to just really soak in that name. Can I also take a second to just point out that this photo was taken on 6-9? Nice. Anyway, for all intents and purposes, this guy just seems like a knockoff Furby plush with a handful of push to talk phrases, but I love the way he looks. He's like a plush version of those gumball ice creams. Sometimes he comes really close to just looking like a respectable Furby, and other times his facial proportions are so off that he becomes his own creature. Look at this one. He's got his own house. Good for him. Hair Baby. Hair Baby. Hair Baby is pretty much just a keychain that can vibrate, but good lord do I love the name Hair Baby. It's even got a bootleg of the official Furby tag attached to it with the words Hair Baby proudly emblazoned above the real deal's head. I'm also super into this blessed image of two hair babies and a hoodie pet. Good vibes exude from this photo. Hoodie pet is also basically just a vibrating keychain and similar to Baby Luby, he's very gumball ice cream core. Just look at them. I love every single photo here. I genuinely love to own a hoodie pet because his face is just so hilarious. Boomy is a fun little guy who hails from Russia. I just love this pervasive trend among Furby fakes where the designers basically completely ripped off the way Furbies look, but then they were like, hmm, how can I improve this design? Oh, I know, arms. It looks kind of cute sometimes, but on some Boomies, the arms are so silly. It just reminds me of Pip the Bear. I'm also a huge fan of how abrasive the packaging is. Train it singing! Boomy speaks Boomish! If you play, it learns! English or even another language. I am nice singer. Goey is, is huh, uh, Goey is from France and he's a nightmare child. Goey is one of the fakes that Tiger and Hasbro actually bothered to take legal action against, which is kind of ironic considering out of all the fakes I've shown so far, I actually think he has the least resemblance to a real Furby. But I have to assume he infringes on Furby's rights in some other way. According to the Furby wiki, there's no known recordings of Goey in action, and honestly, I am comfortable with that. If I see this thing move, I'm throwing hands. It's fight or flight mode, baby. Furbicino is a fake from Italy. I really love how Furby fakes are from all around the world. Not only does it lend to their designs and packaging all being really unique from one another, but it also just goes to show how globally desired Furbies were. This little guy is basically just a plush with some pre-recorded phrases and a pull string, but I honestly love the way they look. The long ears, small eyes, and black face plates give them a really unique charm. It's definitely one of the cuter fakes in my opinion. There's not much to say about Gigabot, but I wanted to show him off just because he's got a pretty unique look as far as fakes go. Well, 
That is if you ignore Space Robbie 1, Gizmo 1, Wonder Space Robo, Space Robbie 2, Robonagi, Gizmo 2, Bolinagi, and Space Robbie 3, Revenge of the Sith. Okay, so there's a lot of generic robotic fakes. To be fair, most of these were produced by the same company, Team Force, so it makes sense they kind of have a family resemblance. But my personal favorite thing about Gigabot is the list of features on his box and how the first bullet point is, I will keep surprising you. Another good one is, I can learn up to 500 phrases English, followed up by, the longer time you play with me, then I will be smarter. Well, don't get too crazy with that smart English, Gigabot. While Mo Guai doesn't win any points for originality in its name, and yes, they are just named after the gremlin species from the movie Gremlins, they're actually pretty interesting in that they come with a switch that lets them speak German, French, or English. I'm not super into their design, but you gotta admit it's pretty different. This one looks like the unholy union of Mokona and Monokuma. I'm gonna call you Mokonokuma. Perfect. Papara, not to be confused with the hit rapper Parappa, is a Furby fake that... Oh no! He's a Furby and he's got toes? Not only does this fake look like it dragged itself out of a sewer after meditating in the forest for a hundred years, but those feet! It can't get any worse than those! Ah, I hate this! The clawed ones suck too! Why do you look like the Lorax with depression? After a full day of poring over the Furby wiki and YouTube videos of fakes, I thought I'd peeked at burbles, but no, fakes are just the gift that keeps on giving. I'm just gonna give y'all a good old fashioned scroll through Papara's gallery, cause wow. To be fair, Papara isn't even that bad looking, and I'd even go so far as to say he's cute in a weird way, as long as you don't get distracted by those big honking toesies. The back of his box is cute too. It says, Digital Pet Papara. Love me lots, okay? It'll grow to love you. It sings, talks, dances, loves pets, and goes from speaking Papara language to gradually learning Japanese. Standard Furby wannabe packaging, but I like the little kawaii gatene in quotes. Now, if only it would put some shoes on or something. Here's another particularly furry fake, Pooby. I actually really like Pooby, and it does the thing that I wish more of these fakes did, which is leaning into the bird-like qualities that Furby already has. Rather than Donkey Kong arms or succulent toes, this guy's got some good fluff and a pair of wings. They're actually kind of hard to see through all the fluff in these photos, but the official art makes the wings clearer. Pooby is an odd one to be sure, but I like him. He reminds me of Anoki from Zelda, so maybe that's why. Marmo the Moon Angel is a really unique creature that I think I'd categorize as Furby inspired. Buying this gal secondhand seems difficult and fairly pricey compared to other Furby fakes, which speaks to its merits as an individual toy. As the name implies, she looks to be inspired by a marmoset rather than the birds and penguins we've seen amongst other Furby lookalikes. The booklet claims that Marmos are angel monkeys that have come from the moon, so that adds up. While I'm not a huge fan of her big grabby arms, it's a cute idea to let her cling to things, as this seems conducive to a child taking Marmo with them on the go. Her AI, appearance, internal build, and functionality are all completely different from anything we've seen so far, although it seems she may share some voice clips with other fakes. Unfortunately, it seems like her abilities are fairly limited compared to a Furby, as she only has a sensor for light, head touches, and feeding. She doesn't have a tummy or noise sensor. I really like that Marmo doesn't beat around the bush with its similarities to Furby. Its box says, Marmo can talk to other Marmo and also to other similar type of friends who have big eyes and ears as Marmo. It's pretty much just like, just so you know, Marmos can talk to a certain someone whose name starts with F and ends with Irby. I admire the honesty. Marmo's packaging claims that she's shy at first, and from watching videos, this seems to be true to her mannerisms. She's quiet and doesn't say much when she's fresh out of the box, but the more you play with her, the more she talks and sings and seems to enjoy herself, which I think is really cute. The weirdest thing to me about Marmo is that she has optional attachable feet. Most videos I've watched about Marmo have opted to not attach the feet, and it's not hard to see why. Well. They get a little lost under all her fur anyway. 
I wish Marmos looked a little more like their 2D art, which I personally find a lot cuter than the design of the toy itself, but I understand that drawings don't always translate perfectly to toy form. Anyway, Marmo gets the award for most innovative Furby wannabe. She tried to be different and mostly succeeded. Remember our beloved friend Papara from four minutes ago? We'll get ready for Papara. Two. Oh, that's Papara too? Huh, uh, okay. Well, I'm not really sure why he's Papara too. He's also known as Tonkuri, and I wanted to show him just because he's cute. I also kind of like his stubby little ham ham arms. It's one of the few Furby fakes with arms that doesn't make me nervous. Tonkuri is funny because he reportedly has the same voice as Furbish and Baby Brainy, he has basically the same packaging as Papara, he's got the same battery compartment as Ferdy. Yeah, we're back for another good old slurp of the Furby bootleg primordial sludge again. You'll notice on this Japanese ad for Tonkuri, there's also an ad for a little guy named Yappy. His full title is Kamate Yappy. Kamate meaning to care about or to get involved with, so it's basically like a cute way of saying, please take care of me and involve me with your life. What I want to comment on is these prices. Is this the price for Tonkuri, Yappy, or both? Either way, that's like a good 70 to 80 bucks right there. And the backpack to carry your little luxury ham ham is like $150. What? For a price like that, the backpack better talk too. Looking at Yappy again, he looks like just a plush keychain, but the ad says he can talk, so I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that maybe he's a push to talk plush bonus that came with Tonkuri. Maybe you could pay a little extra to get him? I don't really know, but for $80, you could go buy a real hamster and an enclosure and probably like, I don't know, Diddy Kong? That's a lot of money. Herbie, talking smarty, and Little Big Mouth Slammer all appear to be roughly the same thing with some variations on face and size. They're all plushes with push to talk phrases, but one thing that's funny is that Herbie boasts 54 phrases, and Talking Smarty has nine. Not so talking or smarty after all, huh? But okay, let me really revel in Little Big Mouth Slammer, cause holy shit, I think out of all the Furby fakes, he might have my number one favorite name. And after reading about Herbie and Smarty, I expected him to be another generic push to talk toy, but nope, he speaks when he is slammed against a surface. Hey, I know what will make children grow up gentle and empathetic and definitely not dog kickers, a toy that incentivizes miniature domestic violence. Another toy I came across while doing research is Grumblies. Now, Grumblies seem to be a recent creation, maybe as recent as 2018, and they're absolutely nothing like Furby apart from being a robot interactive pet. But I had to bring them up in conjunction with Little Big Mouth Slammer because they're another toy that encourages children to beat the shit out of them. My favorite thing about this is the reviews from complaining parents saying the toy immediately broke after taking some abuse. I'm gonna go ahead and file this away with burbles under toy functions that seem antithetical to what it means to be a child's toy. My favorite part of stumbling across Grumblies is this chaotic neutral review I found. Absolutely hilarious. It growls, farts, and burps, and then has a tantrum once it reaches its breaking point. Some parents will think it's inappropriate or sense the wrong message. You beat the crap out of it in order to give it a meltdown, which is more the reason to buy it and send it home to an overly uptight family. My nephew's gonna love it. His mama? Not so much. Lol. I'll also add we've been tormenting ours pretty frequently and harshly. It may have been drop kicked at some point, and so far it's held up very well. Uh, you good, Laura? And lastly, this very poetic review. This was a gift from my grandson. He hates it, his sister hates it. They are frightened of it and don't want it in their room. Not a nice birthday present. I failed. I mentioned earlier that Tiger and Hasbro tried to crack down against bootlegs through legal action and issuing their own products with tags of authenticity, but those weren't the only methods of justice they employed. They also posted warnings on their official sites, seized fake Furbies and catalogs featuring fake Furbies, and man, if you didn't already get the impression that knockoffs were prevalent during the Furby craze, take a look at this. 
Tiger shut down a production line in South China that was producing 5,000 knockoffs daily. Wow. But the most upsetting legal measure taken against the bootleggers was, without a doubt, what I'm calling the London Furby Trials. Yup, you read that right. 20,000 fakes shredded in an event the Irish Times called Furby Side. And actually, it might have been more since this article says that 70,000 fakes were raided throughout Europe. This is just brutal. I know there isn't much else to be done with the fakes, but something about the thought of them being sent to an inhumane end like this makes me really sad. Maybe Toy Story just instilled too much empathy for toys into me, but it's hard for me to wrap my mind around that much raw Furby carnage. I hope they at least recycled the material somehow and didn't just dump it. Look, I'm not gonna try to defend bootlegs. Objectively, they're illegal, and toy companies have every right to be litigious and protect what's theirs. But I know for a lot of kids, especially poor kids or kids growing up in places where access to a genuine product is limited, sometimes bootlegs are all you can get. And at the very least, I think I've made it obvious throughout this video that I find the phenomenon of bootlegs and wannabe products really funny and fascinating, as it can give rise to some downright stranger, bizarre creations. I like to think about all the kids out there who probably brought their marmo to school to show it off to their friends. All the kids who love their pooby as if it were every bit as special and valuable as a real Furby. All the kids that went to bed, snuggled up with their beloved Furbicino. But not their burble, because that shit's in the crisper. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Please like and comment if you enjoyed this video. Let me know which of these wild, wild knockoffs was your favorite. You can subscribe if you want to, but I've never made a video quite like this before, and who knows when I will again, so that's up to you. I just want to hear what you liked about it. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs>